Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Open Mic. And today we have two guests, two, who are going to talk about Pink Goldfish 2.0. So we've got Stan Phelps, who is the president of NSA Carolinas, and his co-author, Dave Rendell. And I'm sure they're going to talk to us a little bit about how to be more maybe flossom. So let's get started. Our event is next Saturday, October 2nd. And welcome. Tell us what you're going to talk about. Yeah, exciting. So I'm going to put it on Dave since he's the inspiration behind Pink. What are we going to talk about? Talk about how to differentiate yourself using your weaknesses. So most of the time, especially as speakers, we say, well, what are the good ones doing? And how do I do something like that? Instead of what are the good ones doing? And how do I do something from different from that? So I'll show you how to differentiate yourself as a speaker, differentiate your business, differentiate your presentation, differentiate your books. Um, but the problem is differentiation usually looks wrong, bad, like a mistake, ineffective, because if that's not what the other people are doing, then right, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. So we'll show you how things that look like flaws, things that look like weaknesses, things that look like mistakes can actually be huge strengths as you try to differentiate your speaking business. Yeah. The, the simple idea that your flaws and the things that make you unique or weird or different, like wearing head to toe pink and <laughs> you can't see the pink pants. But the what? Pink pants. <laughs> oh, we could see them. All right. Those, those are the things that make you awesome. Or as Dave and I talk about in the, in the concept of the book, the things that make you flossom. So it's an interesting technique where in some cases you do more of what makes you unique or in some cases where you purposely do less and pull back from what everyone else does as normal. Well, and also, and that's where it's hard is that doing that is usually looks like doing more of something wrong and less of what seems to be right or seems to be working or seems to be winning. So we look at benchmarks and we look at best practices and we look at success stories and then we try to copy it, which then means you're just a lesser version of something else. You're, you end up looking very similar to everyone else, but not quite right. Instead of being your own version of yourself, a unique version of what you're trying to create. And so we try to help people resolve that issue between, well, wouldn't that be a mistake? Wouldn't that be wrong? Wouldn't that be bad? Wouldn't that be ineffective? And try to show that that's not actually true and that, that those strategies work as well. Wow. So it looks like we're going to get confidence in being who we really are. Yeah. And, and, and having the courage to stand out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there, was, if there was one message that I think that was clear that came out of the, the influence recap that we did back in August was that there's no one way to do this business. And so that was a really reassuring you know, message to me that we can all be different. There's no one thing we have to copy or, or model ourselves after. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about it on the way in today. You know, If you go to Toastmasters or something like that, they're gonna teach you how to be appropriate and professional mm -hmm. and how to, how to not be offensive and how to do things the right way. And then Gary V shows up and starts swearing and dropping F-bombs all over the right. place and talking for an hour and 45 minutes off the top of his head while he's sitting down with no notes and no slides and sharing stories and criticizing people. And he's incredibly successful. So I think we, we have these we have these fears. Uh, <laughs> we have Very these good. fears. Um, and that's what we'll show. One of our strategies is opposing, you know, that, that anything good that someone's doing, you can probably do the opposite of that thing. And that would also work as well. When that doesn't seem true, it seems like the opposite of a good thing must be a bad thing. And, and we have a bunch of examples of how the opposite of a good thing is also good. And, um, and again, and that's part of the thing too, is this isn't even about people kind of making up something different. It's allowing who they really are to come out in the first place. We don't think you need to sort of come up with a, a gimmick or something like that. So people always ask us now, why pink? Mm -hmm. um, and it started because I have three daughters and I tell jokes in my presentations about how they're turning me into a woman. And I didn't wake up one morning and go, I need a gimmick. I need a thing. I need something to separate me. It was a natural thing. It was part of my life. It was part of my story. You started small. Yeah, I started with pink shoes. It wasn't a huge deal. A pink button down shirt. It wasn't a huge deal. But then we went to pink pants and now the car is wrapped pink. And now I even have... <laughs> 
uh, you know, a pink phone case and my book covers are pink and my socks are pink. I even have pink tattoos so that no one can ever accuse me of not having pink on at any given time. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a gimmick. It wasn't pretend it wasn't like, well, you know, what can I do to be different from everybody else? It was a gradually releasing myself to, I wanted to wear a t-shirt. I wanted to be more casual. I'm not a suit wearing sort of a person. Um, and, and that's worked. It's worked in my speaking business. So that's the other thing, Stan and I are obviously both speakers and this stuff that we're teaching is also stuff that we're using. So we're not saying, hey, we think this could work for you. Meanwhile, we're not trying it. I mean, we wrapped my car pink and drove around the country this summer for our Pink Goldfish book tour. And Stan, this was Stan's kind of first time in maximum pink. I got him some pink shoes. He's got the pink glasses. And how many times, Stan, did people just just stop us on the street? I mean, just People yeah. shouting across the street, people asking us, where do you find pink shoes? People want to talk to us about the car, people in the drive through It's just nonstop, but it's because we're willing to do something different. Yeah. Oh, can't, can't, get can't, can't get them in there. Can't get them in there. Yeah. We're not, Stan's not flexible. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, this take is your shoe off and hold it up. Not OSHA approved. Oh my gosh. There you guys. Pink, Whoa. Pink yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's. <laughs> That's the other part of the story is we're not people telling people to try something we haven't done. We walk the talk. We do this on a daily basis. And the more I've invested in it and now Stan and I together, the more I've invested in the pink, the more it's paid off for me. Like I said, it's just always the next level. I mean, I do Ironman triathlons and I crossed the finish line for the first Ironman I did. And I got a lot of positive feedback, but one of them was, hey, no pink. And so now I have a pink triathlon suit and a pink bike helmet and a pink bike and all those kinds of things, because it's become part of sort of not just my business, but who I am. And that's maybe another part of this as well, that your speaking business should be to a large extent about who you are as a person, not some separate professional persona that you put on in order to market yourself appropriately and seem like the kind of person you think audiences want. It can be a real just outgrowth of who you are and your speaking business can just be you um, as a person. My business and me are not two different things. Uh, It's an expression of who I am. And that authenticity helps on things like social media and stuff like that. Anything I'm doing is a representation of the message that I have. Yeah, definitely memorable. And I would say it's also deep. You know, it's it's one thing to say, oh, they always wear pink. But then when you really look at how deep it goes, it really does. It, it permeates your entire life, your presence, and also the experience of even being with you, even just for this few minutes that we're together. So it's very impressive. It's, it takes dedication. It takes a lot of courage and confidence. So I think that's what we're going to get. I'm looking for that. And a quick question. Do we have to wear pink shoes or can we just? You know? <laughs> well, I mean, that's an example. I spoke in Dubai one time and these people had already seen me speak once. And there was, so there was a whole row of people that showed up all in pink. So we, people start to identify with it and start, you have like a fan club out there. In right. the yeah. So people definitely should wear pink if they're comfortable with it. Yeah. <laughs> one, one organizer asked Dave if he wouldn't mind doing the, the presentation without the pink pants. Oh, and he said, I, I don't know what type of event this is, but I, I'm pretty sure you want me to wear pants. I thought maybe, <laughs> maybe a little extra if I go without the pants. So so really, really quick. What's cool is, you know, the book. Oh, yeah. Let's see the great book. assessment. So that's one of the mm-hmm. things that we're going to do. Um, you know, during the, the program itself, we'll look at wow, strengths look at and weaknesses. Yeah. We'll look at how those kind of match up to be, to give you kind of insight of how you can actually do this yourself. So it's not just going to be theory. We're actually going to do some practice and get into it. Yeah. Awesome. Or flossum. Flossum. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> be on All the right. second. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we'll see everyone on October 2nd. Thank you so much for being here. I love your energy, enthusiasm, and your pink. So um, we'll see you soon. And everybody sign up right now. Sign up right now.